it would take five minutes for Niagara Falls to fill Slade Lake back up. So it sounds like a lot of water, but it just shows you how much water flows over Niagara Falls per per second. Um, now you're wondering where did all that water go? If you look at the center of this image, a circular feature is clearly visible. This is just one of the sinkholes that likely became reactivated and helped drain the lake. It was like a plug was pulled in a bathtub. Uh, there are more than one active drains in this lake, however. And at the eastern end of the lake, a cave was becoming visible as the water level dropped. And as the water level continued to drop, the morphology of the cave became more apparent. Looking down into it with the drone, it looks like a, a series of vertical conduits of sorts. Back to the diagram of karst topography. Um, while this is a cartoon for limestone, there could be a similar network of caves beneath the lake and more than likely across the entire karst belt. Remember, there has to be enough void space for the aquifer to fit in a billion bottles of wine. But maybe there is an outlet at a lower hydraulic gradient. Uh, River Phillip is an obvious candidate nearby. Uh, either way, there is considerable movement of water happening. Timing. Photos show the lake full to the tree line in September of 2019. And this photo from March of this year shows a ridge of ice at the tree line suggesting that the lake began to drain soon after the winter freeze up. So in a matter of months, the lake was able to drain itself. And will it fill back up? Let's look at the historical record in air photos. You can see that much of the lake bed was exposed in 1939, including the circular feature sinkhole in the, the middle of the lake. and variably exposed lake bed in the following decades. Uh, locals refer to this lake as dry lake uh, because it's known to empty from time to time. So it's no secret in the Oxford area that this lake fluctuates uh, its water levels. Um, they even say that it's more anomalous for this lake to be full than it is to be empty. So let's look at another uh, piece of historical record. Landsat. Well, Landsat is satellite imagery that can differentiate the Earth's surface based on reflectance and absorbance of different wavelengths of light. And in the following series of images, the black color represents water and pink represents bare ground like the highway just north of the lake. I uh, see it in a pink strip or when the lake bed is visible. So in 1984 here you can see a few pink pixels long. So the lake wasn't totally full, but it was still quite full. So this will go year by year through the decades to now. So this year by year record of the lake levels and the amount of water fluctuation is, is really apparent. For the last few years, however, the lake levels have been quite high until 2020 that is, which looks like the lowest the water has been in a number of decades. The geological processes in the karst terrain are always ongoing as we've seen by the formation of the new sinkhole in Oxford, followed by the reactivation of old sinkholes in Slade Lake. And even more recently, just in September, another small water body has drained outside of the main karst belt, but still within the Windsor Group. And we hope to continue to monitor the region for karst activity and look to better understand and refine the overall associated risks. And to do that, we would look at characterizing existing sinkholes and look at further change detection and hydrogeological studies. We also invite other agencies and organizations to get involved with their expertise. 
In the meantime, Nova Scotia has an online interactive karst risk map that can help users determine what sort of risk zone they are living in. And what can you do to better understand the karst risk in your area? Well, check our online karst risk map. Watch for changes in the ground surface. Look for inexplicable cracks in your foundations, walls, or pavement. Uh, if the sinkhole develops, stay safe distance away and evacuate ne if necessary and report the finding. Uh, educate yourself on the risks and mitigation strategies associated with KARST and check in with your municipal office to see if there are any development restrictions and understand your insurance policy. And last but not least, this is a little game of sinkhole or not a sinkhole. So I've now somehow been called to most new hole occurrences in Nova Scotia. And here are just an example of a few. Um, up in the top left, this area is in St. Margaret's Bay Road. And they had a number of these holes open up in their lawn. It, it, turns out was just poor landscaping. It was soil that had trickled down between granite boulders. So not, not a true sinkhole. And there's another one, an opening about six or eight inches diameter, but over six meters deep. And this was an old well that was covered up by a driveway. And up in Cape Breton, we have a dip in a road and that's just an example of, of gypsum dissolving at surface. Uh, here is a typical in-town sinkhole from leaking infrastructure. And this one in the bottom left is in Joggins and it's a collapsed bootleg coal mine. Um, another collapsed mine shaft in the middle, that one was at a historical gold mine. This was a cover collapse sinkhole situation in Falmouth with the uh, devastating losses there. And this one is the most recent sinkhole I visited. It was a true sinkhole that formed in, in somebody's driveway just around the Stewiak area. So that's all I have. Many thanks to all the people who've been part of the Oxford Sinkhole Story and to the Nova Scotia Institute of Science for hosting this talk. And please feel free to reach out if you have any follow-up questions or comments and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, that was very informative.